Hey guys, remember when, like last month, Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House, proposed a budget with very little spending cuts and no uh, single subject spending bills? Because the, the way Washington works, if you didn't understand, if you want to fund the military, it's not a vote on funding the military. You have to couple the military next to Ukraine and Israel and all these other things. So if you disagree on one, it's too bad. You got to vote for all three or not vote for any of them. Um, that's how politics works today. But anyways, so McCarthy was ousted because he didn't want to, you know, really cut spending. Now we have a new speaker, Speaker Johnson. And if there's any, if you had any hope that uh, we were going to solve this fiscal crisis politically, uh, this should dash your hopes upon the rocks. He proposed, Johnson proposed, basically the exact same spending bill as McCarthy. No surprise, House Speaker Johnson proposes the same plan as McCarthy. Hmm. According to the documents obtained by the Wall Street Journal, in the two-step plan, uh, doesn't pass. House Republicans will turn to what they call a full year continuing resolution. Basically, this needs all Republican support to pass. And uh, only a few Republicans didn't want to support McCarthy and therefore didn't pass. So it either needs Democrats or every single, nearly every single Republican in Congress. Um, so already, however, there are signs of trouble with the spending hawks. Some Republicans have said they oppose any temporary spending extensions. Without cuts, right? Without cuts, <clears throat> and Congress would focus instead on finalizing individual spending bills for the entire year. So they hate a lot of the spending hawks hate this continuing resolution and piling everything together. But I want you to think about something. And a lot of people say these uh, these politicians have no backbone. Right, they won't. They won't cut spending. They're so scared politically, and I agree with you on that. But I want you to think about. Let's say, in four days, the they did not pass a budget, and we had to have a government shutdown. Government shuts down right before Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, TSA. They always cut. You know the things that people need, or the government has imposed on people. Therefore, now they have to use it like TSA, and therefore a bit they can't travel during Thanksgiving. The majority of voters, if you if you were to tell them, hey guys, the reason TSA is shut down is because these politicians don't want to vote for this and they do these omnibus spending bills and I, mm, they don't care. They don't care, right? What they care about is that TSA is shut down. And then where do they need to point their finger? Oh, okay, it's a Republican speaker. So despite um, yes, these politicians being scared politically. I think they have a valid reason because the American people want stuff, right? It is the American voter who has voted in free stuff. Maybe maybe it's because they we, they don't understand economics and they haven't experienced pain for the last 30 years, or at least horrible pain uh, economically due to our economic frivolity around the world. But today, I think it's different where if you continue to vote for spending, like any lever you pull, you cut spending, you raise spending. That's going to have very bad effects on the economy. Reason being, the government has become such a massive part of the economy. So when private business, when the citizens become reliant on the government, which the government loves, anytime the government moves that lever, forward or backward, increase spending, lower spending. It causes inflation. It causes the economy to, to kind of fall apart because it is built on a shaky foundation of printed money. It's all made up. And when the printer stops printing, the economy kind of grinds to a halt. And no matter who the politician is, whether they agree with you and me or not, they're making these political calculations like, Yes, is the right thing to do, but if we do this, what are the voters going to say? Yada, yada, yada. And so if you're looking at, at this being solved politically, the fiscal cliff that we're in, the broken monetary system, the rampant government spending and corruption, 
I don't think the American people want it to be fixed yet. I think the American people will want it to be fixed when the pain gets bad enough. Uh, I was talking on a podcast earlier. If you've ever heard of the marshmallow test, it's essentially um, delayed gratification. Like, so if you give a marshmallow to a kid, hey, you can have this one now, or you can have three if you wait 15 minutes. It's do they delay gratification? What the government has been promising is that, hey, if you eat this marshmallow now, you can also have three later. You know, you don't have to delay gratification at all. I think in this decade, the government will promise that marshmallow now won't actually be able to deliver on it, and the three marshmallows later won't be there either. Because the government does not create prosperity. The government does not create productivity. They can only print currency units. And it happens slowly, and then all at once, where people realize, wait a second, you keep upping my Social Security check, and you're upping it by 10% every year, and my purchasing power goes down by 20. That can last for a while. But eventually, three, four, five years, if that cycle continues, people start to get really ticked off. And if they go to government for that same Pavlov's dog response, which is print more money, it just makes it worse. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all in the next one. Peace.